Hi, welcome to product review by Watt Hour. In this video, we are going to do the review and test of this, this 1500 watt boost converter with an input of 10 to 60 volts and output of 12 to 90 volts. We are going to test it with 90 volts, 1.5 kilowatt, 1500 watts, and also I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the efficiency at 1500 watt and we'll lower it. And also, I'm going to change the input voltage to 50 volts, input of 36 volts, input of 24 volts, and up to 12 volts we are going to test it and we'll show you the efficiency. This is a version with a fan and also with a larger heatsink and larger inductor with comparing to the other version which is called 1200 watt. It's 940 watts and here is the efficiency. Constantly turning on and off. I'm going to test input and output voltage and see what is the minimum and maximum and also we are going to test it with different voltages and current from 12 volts up to 90 volts and we will test and see how much this can handle. Uh, in the meantime I'm going to use a thermal camera from time to time to show you which part of the device is getting hot the most and also I'm going to show you the ripple of the output voltage charging battery of batteries that you have let's get started with this by visiting our website whatour.ca this is a detailed video on the larger screen you can click here on the status bar and you will see different chapters of the video where you can click and move to that chapter easily on the mobile device touch the title and you will see different chapters where you can touch and jump to that chapter easily. And this is a boost converter or a step up converter meaning it receives a voltage at the input and the voltage will be increased at the output where you can set the voltage. The, the input that this accepts is around 10 to 60 volts and the output is 12 to up to 90 volts. The rated power for this one is uh, listed at 1500 watts. It has separate video. There was another version which did not have this uh, fan and I had introduction video which I burned three of these uh, during the test. The video for that link is below the video in the description. Efficient, so this has better circuitry a larger inductor to handle larger current, larger heat sink with comparing to these and also it has a fan and this is sold on Amazon here for example Amazon US $31, $40 and, and here on AliExpress for $15, $16, $24 there is some shipping involved and waiting time $25 so these are the prices unfortunately like many other products that are sold on eBay and Amazon and Aliexpress this does not have a model number so I have to mention 10 to 60 volts input 12 to 90 volts output 1500 watt boost converter charger so this is listed as 1500 watt but my test shown that under no circumstances I can get 1500 watts where is that 1500 watt coming from so if you see 1500 watts divided by 60 volts you will get 25 ampere at the input and that's the whole point so this is called 1500 watt because if you multiply 60 by 25 you will get 1500 all the converters will have losses so this has around 10 to 20 percent loss so if we get 15% loss then we will lose 225 watts on this module as heat so 1500 minus 225 so we'll get 1275 now so here are important facts about this module when the input voltage is 10 to 30 volts the maximum current can go up to 30 ampere but if the voltage increases from 31 to 60 it will be maximum of 25 ampere so very important keep that in mind and here output current 
maximum 20 ampere but please enhance heat dissipate when over 15 ampere which means which means this is not enough so you have to put extra heat sink or cooling to make this happen otherwise with this we can get 15 ampere at the output if you if you look at the 15 ampere at the output with current state to make it simple the input current cannot exceed 25 ampere and the output cannot exceed 15 ampere so in any cases either the power should not exceed 1500 watt at the input or the current should not increase above 25 at the input and above 15 at the output to purchase this from affiliated Amazon store across the world the link is below the video in the description so you can click and buy now as I prepare this for the test make sure to hit the subscribe button and subscribe now now let me explain the module we have four terminals here these two are for the positive and these two are for the negative for the input because when you set the output for higher voltage and there is a lot of current with the lower voltage we will have huge current for that purpose we need to have very thick wire and I, I agree with the design that we should have multiple of this um, input uh, terminals then we have 220 ampere fuse so these are side by side and parallel so it becomes 40 ampere and these two are the output terminals the positive is labeled on this side the negative on this side you can set the output voltage from here and these capacitors are for filtering the output and these are for the input and switching and the other section we have the pulse width modulation controller underneath of this and these are for the uh, constant current measurement and this this is the shunt resistor all current will pass through this and the voltage that appears across this is representing the amount of current so it can be controlled using all these uh, MOSFETs and other semiconductors underneath we have a large heat sink and then we have a fan this label is just a ch you see this is for USB somebody just put it to make it their own brand but there is no such such brand everybody is producing this length of the module is 130.2 millimeters the width is 51.9 or 52 millimeters we have these standoffs if you do not have it if you put it on a surface it will be covered and this fan will not function so you have to have these standoffs so it has always this much space so the air can escape or it will be cooled down this fan operates when the temperature when the heat sink get hot enough and there is a switch connected and it will turn on this fan For where you will set the current limit from here this device does not have short circuit, circuit protection for, for other normal devices you will connect the wire and short circuit it and then you set the current which I have explained it in many other videos that I have but in this one you cannot do it they have strictly forbidden that that this will die if you do that so once you connect it to the load and you are measuring the current then you can reduce the current by rotating it clockwise will increase the current and this one over current protection is for the input there is an LED when the current reaches above 30 ampere or 35 this will turn on I've not gone above 30 ampere so I don't know the exact value this is under voltage protection it will protect the battery when the voltage reaches a certain value that you set using this potentiometer it will disconnect the output or turn off the output so the battery is not drained and damaged I'm going to explain that and demonstrate it and here are uh, three from the previous videos that I've done and so these are exactly the same modules that you see except this inductor if you look at it from the top the inductor is larger and everything else is exactly the same 
as they are. But here they put 15, 15, the two mm, fuse, and here it is 20, 20. And this heat sink is a little th uh, thicker, and this is not thick. And then we have a fan, which with this one, there is a terminal, but the fan is not present. Also, as you can see in this module that we are doing, for these, for this pulsed modulation chip, there is no heat sink, but here they put also a heat sink to cool it down. Now let's open uh, underneath and show you all the components. First, so let's remove the fan connector. So this is our fan temperature sensor and switch. And this is the fan switch and temperature sensor. They used transistor as a temperature sensor here. And the power will come here to this module. And the positive from this point goes to in here. And from the other side, it comes to this pin. Uh, to power up the fan via this connector. This piece here, this is NCE80H15. And this one here is 20100 CT. This is a short key diet. And we have the same pair on this side. We have wrapped the model number so we don't know what it is. And now let me put some thermal paste back here. Let's have a look at this piece, this small chip. And it is XL7005 from XL Semiconductor. And here is a data sheet for XL7005A. This is 0.4 ampere, 80 volt, back DC to DC converter. And now let's have a look at this chip here. And that is LM358. LM358 is a dual single supply operational amplifier. And this piece in between, this between these two chips, the middle one, this is SS110. SS110, this is a short key rectifier diode. This is B772. And this one is D82. And B772 is a PNP transistor. And D882 is also, that's NPN. These are complementary transistors, both of these. And here, this is TL4941 which in here it is covered, but on this module, exact the same module, it is revealed here. TL4941 is a pulsed modulation controller circuit. Because this module does not have short circuit protection, at the output here, you cannot set the current the way that you want it. 
the only way that you can set the current is to allow the current at the maximum and then slowly reduce it from here which will not work in your favor uh, usually with uh, constant current devices you will short circuit the output and then you read the current and slowly reduce it but with this it is not possible make sure that do not short circuit as this does not have a short circuit protection and now I'm setting the, the resistance to 2 ohm in my device here so this is now 2 ohm it draws 11 ampere 12 ampere the total power is 258 285 and now I can rotate this counterclockwise You see, I'm, I'm reducing it. Now, we can go with different currents, but keep the following in mind. When the input is from 30 to 60 volts, maximum current is 25 ampere. So input cannot go above 25 ampere here. When you are using it between 10 to 30 volts, then it can go 30 ampere. So the output current is always 20 ampere maximum, but make sure that we do not get above 1,500 watt at the output. And when it is above 15 ampere at the output, we need heat sink. My system is ready. This is a 100 ampere shunt connected with this. And that's the input voltage and current. You will read it. And the output voltage and current will be read here. This is a current voltage power. Also, I will zoom in so you can see it, but here you will see also the graph of voltage and current if it goes up and down. Now I've set input uh, with the highest voltage that this can accept, 60 volts. The output, as you can see, is 90 volts. Input is now 60 volts. That's the highest input voltage, and I'm going with the highest output. Uh, and you can see it is set to 90 volts. At the moment, I've set it to around 280 watts let me turn it on so 284 watts that's the power that you're reading and here is the input current 4.9 ampere 60 volts and the output is 3.1 ampere let's just increase that We have, to, we have to watch the input is not increasing beyond 25 and output beyond 20 ampere and, and that is 500 watts we are getting and here is the output 60 volts 542 watts let's go 600 we are at 660 watts at the output and here is the input 60 volts 11.4 ampere and the power is 690 watts we want to get the efficiency 660 divided by 690 and here is the efficiency now the output is 800 watts input is 842 watts and this is the difference so 42 watts is being wasted you convert it output current is 8.9 ampere and here is the efficiency The 60 volts, I'm setting output to 900 watt. Let me turn it on. Now it's 903 watts. I can set it from here. So 
So let's go with 900 watts, and as you can see, the voltage has dropped to 60. Let me change the current. getting 902 watts and output is 10 ampere because 10 times 90 is 900 and here the output is 940 watts and here is the efficiency now I have set output to 1000 watt and here as you can see input is now 17 ampere at 60 volts Output is 1000 watt and 11.1 ampere. Input is 1041 watts. And here is the efficiency. Let's keep it for a few minutes. I want to see how it behaves. The fan is not running yet. Now I'm setting it to 1100 watt. As you can see the voltage has dropped. So the current is now limiting it because it doesn't allow. I turned it but let's go further. And now the current is set to the maximum because I heard the clicks. Electronic load is now buzzing with the fans. 1100 watt output, 12.2 ampere. Input is 19 ampere with 60 volts. 1157 watts is at the input. And here is the efficiency. Now I've set output to 1200 watts. Let me turn it on. And as you can see, the maximum current of the input is now 20 ampere. And the voltage has dropped because the current is limiting. And this is now not allowing it because I'm at the maximum. Let me rotate it so you can hear the clicks. So we cannot get further than this. Now I reduce it to 1100 watt and as you can see now I'm increasing it slowly to see. So 1,100, 1,050 watt is possible. Let's go high. One thousand one hundred and fifty watts. As you can see, one thousand one hundred fifty-four watts. Input is exactly like. 20 ampere and here the now the fan started working 1150 watt is holding that was the sound of my power supply fan here is a thermal image 62 degrees is at this spot where my finger is 
but let me turn this around to show you so the fan is cool the heat sink at this spot is 50 degrees 42 degrees celsius so it is very cool it is now 58 degrees and this is the hottest spot now let's go with the higher power it's set now to 1162 watt i'm turning it on and let me turn it off turn it on again it and as you can see when i disconnect the load it is 91 volts connecting it it goes to 60 let's reduce it 880 watts now if i connect it if i increase it slowly it will work so what we learn is that let's reduce it 880 watts now if i connect it if i increase it slowly it will work so what we learn is that if you connect a load that is 1100 watt it will not be able to handle it but connect a lower watt let's say 800 900 watt and then slowly increase it as you can see we have reached now 1162 watts input is 220 ampere let's go a little higher and see what happens now 1300 watts 1 1.3 kilowatt and that's 1384 watts at the input the fan is constantly turning on and off I've set it again to 600 and this time I'm gonna go higher let's see one thousand four hundred watts high twenty four ampere one thousand four hundred eighty seven watts at the input and the output is now fifteen ampere and let me show you the thermal image seventy two degrees so this has seventy three seventy four degrees exactly at the center of this core maybe underneath 1400 and 1490 and here is the efficiency for this now let's go with the maximum of 1500 watts as you can see output is 90 volts input is 60 volts and i'm turning it on with 1000 watt so now it is 1000 watt and then i'm going to increase it now so that is 1200 20 and put it 1284 watts and let's go higher i want to go 1000 500 to see if it can handle it 1400 now it's 1500 watts and put it 1284 watts and let's go higher I want to go 1500 to see if it can handle it 1400 
Now it's 1,500 watts. Output is 1,583 watts. 16 ampere is at the output and input is very high, 26 ampere. So output divided by input and here is the efficiency. My electronic load is now buzzing with fans. This is output 16.6 ampere. That is the output. And here is the input. 26.3 ampere that we are reading here as well. I want to see if it's able to continuously handle it for longer period. Let's have a look at the thermal camera. 72 degrees Celsius. Fan is running like crazy. Let's see the temperature in this side. 65 degrees at this spot perhaps this is the this piece 65 degrees 67 degrees now I'm setting input to 50 volts and let's go with 90 volts uh, this is currently at 360 watts and as you can see the input current is 7.5 and that's the output current let me increase it so that's 500 watts and 500 watts that watts the output 530 the input here is the efficiency Let's go 600 watts. And here, that's a 600 watts, 6.6 .6 ampere, and 12.16 is 12.64 is the input, 638 is the input, and here is the efficiency. Now output is set to 700 watts, input is 14.6 ampere, output 700, input 739.5, and here is the efficiency. And output is now 800 watts, input is 846, 8.8 .8 ampere the output, and 16.8 ampere is the input and here is the efficiency now output is 900 watts and input is 950 watts the current is 18.83 ampere at the input and output is 10 ampere 9.9 .9. and here is the efficiency now i set output to 1 kilowatt 1000 watt 11 ampere and input is 21 ampere with 1060 watts and here is the efficiency turn this off and while the load is connected let me turn it on as you can see into 1100 watt and input is 23 ampere keep in mind 1100 watt is the output 12 ampere 12.1 12.2 12 ampere is the output and input is 23 1170 watt is the input and here is the efficiency now let's go for 1200 watts
it is now 1200 watts input is 1275 watts and as you can see we have reached at the maximum 25 ampere so with 50 volts input 90 output you can get only 1200 watts because we are already at the edge and it is um, not safe as you can see the fan is running Now I've set input to 36 volts and output is 90 volts the maximum because if it can handle the higher voltage the lower will be, be able to handle it and we will watch this input not to go above 25 and let's increase the power. Now 600 watts it is 18 ampere at 600 watts uh, this is 605 and input is 647 46.6 watts and here is the efficiency and here is at 700 watts 702.7 the input is 753 input current is 20 ampere at 50 volts at 36 volts here is the efficiency output is 800 watts 801 and input is 865.6 24 ampere 8.8 .8 at the output ampere at 90 volts and here is the efficiency Now I'm going to increase the current slowly, the output power, so this is 25 and 25. So 832 watts maximum that you can get from this with 90 volts and 36 at the input. Now let's try the maximum of output with the input of 24 volts, output is 90 volts let's go with some power it's already 200 watts uh, let me increase it to now it's 400 watts at now 90 volts output 18.3 amperes are the input current And here is the efficiency with the input of 441 watts, 404 watts at the output. Now output is 500 watts, input is 556 watts with 90 volts, 5.5 ampere at the output, 23 amperes at the input, and here is the efficiency. Now output is 550 watts, input is 612 that's the maximum 25.5 ampere and here is the efficiency now i've set the input to 17 volts that's 16.8 which is four lithium battery cells in case if you want to power this up and you want to see what is the maximum output and uh, let's go with 300 watts 20 ampere at 313 watts so with 304 watts at the output 342 watts at the input 20 ampere and output is 3.3 .3 ampere at 90 volts and here is the efficiency Now input is 12 volts. I'm setting maximum voltage at the output 90 volts. Let me turn it on. We have to watch for the current. At 200 watts we are getting 21 ampere. So we will watch this make sure that it doesn't go above 30 ampere. So we are allowed to go up to 30 ampere. 
are 271 watts. Input is 335.6 watts and two, 3 ampere at 90 volts. Here is the efficiency. Now let me explain charging battery with this. If you want to charge a lithium battery or different type of batteries that you have, keep in mind that for the battery we need output voltage, specific voltage for the battery and also a specific amount of current or ampere that goes to fill this up. In this module you can set the voltage very easily but we have problem with the current. Normally these are the two wires of the output Normally you connect your ammeter at the output and then short circuit the output so all the current passes to, to you through your ampere meter and then you set the current from here to specific value and then disconnect it. This module however does not have that feature. As soon as you short circuit it, it will get damaged. All of this burn because the design of this cannot handle some features. If you have something that you can set the current from outside before the power comes here, if you can set the current, then you can set the voltage and then you can charge it. For example, for example, if you want to charge four lithium battery, the maximum voltage that you have to look at the data sheet will be 4.2 and multiply by four, so it will be 16.8 volts. You know the voltage, you will set this to 16.8 volts and then for this you need to know at what current you want to charge it. 1C means one of the capacity, the maximum capacity of the, this battery. This is 3.8 or 3800 milliampere hour. So you can set it for 3.8 ampere, that's 1C. Or you can go lower and sometimes in some batteries you can go even higher to charge the battery. Keep in mind the higher the current, the faster the life of the battery will be degraded. You have to set now the current, let's say you want to charge this for uh, 2 ampere, then set the limit for the current from outside at 2 ampere and set this for 16.8 uh, volts and then you can charge the battery. Otherwise this cannot be used for charging batteries. So if you connect this directly with the battery then the current will go with the maximum and then you have to measure and slowly reduce it. And in this process the battery might get damaged. For that reason you have to connect your, your, your external power supply with the current control and set the current before it arrives here. Then you can use it. Otherwise this will damage your battery. Now let me explain the under voltage protection. If you power it with battery and the output for example is 24 volts and input, this is just an example, 15.5 volts. For lithium batteries, if the voltage drops below certain value, the battery gets damaged. So we want to make sure that the current doesn't pass and it will stop. For that we have the voltage protection with this potentiometer and this LED, UVLO. Here, for regular use, make sure that you use this and rotate it uh, clockwise as much as you can, so it allows all the voltage. If you set this in a wrong value, what happens is that, let's say under voltage protection is 15 volts and it will never work above uh, below 15 volts. So first make sure for that and then now let's see we are setting it at 15.5 when the voltage reaches 15.5 or lower the output will be disconnected or will be reduced so the current doesn't pass so for that I'm going uh, counterclockwise like that so you have to do it like 15 20 times slowly until you see the effect and here and pay attention to this potentiometer in here, I'm rotating it slowly, I it will turn on. You see, it is turned on, I'm turning back to the right and the voltage is dropped back clockwise. 
and I, oh, now again I'm going counterclockwise as soon as it turns a little red you see turn red and then just turn right okay so now it is set now it's 15.5 and 24 uh, volts and if I increase the input voltage you see the output is stable it is 16 volts and let's say you are working with 16 volts 17 20 whatever voltage and now if the voltage drops slowly I'm reducing now this voltage pay attention that this LED will turn on and it will uh, reduce output voltage so we set it to 15.5 so 15.5 and slowly as soon as I go below 15.5 At 15, that was how I set it, so the LED will turn on and it reduces the output voltage to keep the voltage as it is. So if I go below this, and the output is now, the current doesn't go, so it blocks the current. And when the voltage goes above 15.5, so let's see, 15.5, yeah, 15 15.8, you see, it allows it. So this is a very good feature to protect the battery. And here is the signal, the ripple when there is no load. And now the output is 7 ampere at 50 volts. If we stop it, the ripple is now 81.6 uh, millivolts. And here is the output 4 ampere at 90 volts. And the amount of REPL is again 81.6 millivolts at 90 volts as well. And here are my conclusion remarks about this module. This module withstand all the tests that I did up to 1.5 kilowatts, 1,500 watts, even 1,507 watts. So this can handle it. It can easily handle it with input of 60 volts once you reduce the voltage you will see that keep in mind that you cannot connect a load directly above 800 watts initially so connect 800 watts at the beginning and then crank it up and increase the current then it can handle it up to 1.5 kilowatt at 60 volts at the input but if you connect initially 1500 watt at the output or 1200 watt this will reduce it and will keep the output output the same as the input so that's one of the backdrop the first thing it is very efficient as you saw it's most of the time motor more than 87 percent up to 94 percent and it has very stable output under a lot of different road load condition even with change at the input it's very good and it has good heat dissipation with heat temperature sensor and fan and large heat sink and bad thing about this is that it doesn't have short circuit protection so after you, you have to be very careful and it has almost impossible or very bad current limiting system meaning you have to allow the current to go measure and then reduce it so it, this might damage devices so it's not good because it doesn't have any casing it will not have any protection so that's not good if it had a case it would have been much better and how I did the efficiency calculation first we have to get the power by multiplying voltage to the current and then 
the efficiency is the output power divided by the input power which we use this formula and then times 100 that will give you the efficiency and here with the input of 12 volts and when you get output of 90 volts the input will be 29.3 ampere output will be 3.2 ampere and if you divide output by input you will get 82% efficiency which means uh, it has 18% waste of energy thank you for watching a video from what hour if you learned something and found this useful please thumb up as this will help my video in the search algorithm of youtube if you have comment or question please post it at the comment section below i try to answer and reply and don't forget to subscribe so you get updates of my upcoming videos in this video we are going to do the re review of this wuji wz5005 5 ampere 50 volts or 250 watt back converter that can be controlled also via Wi-Fi of your phone Android device. I'm going to explain the module, how to use it with all the features and functions. I'm going to show you the minimum and maximum input voltage and minimum and maximum output voltage. Then I'm going to test it with the inputs of uh, 6 volts, 12 volts, 15 